Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Kintsugi Podcast. I'll be back in a minute with today's conversation about resilience. But first, if you're interested in creating a better life, having a better career, please visit kintsugipodcast.com and grab your free workbook on how to have a better life. In it, you'll discover tips and routines so you can find the energy for the things and the people who matter most so you can create a better tomorrow and create the life and career you desire. I'm recording this on the weekend of July 4th here in the States. So a belated happy July 4th weekend to all of our Kintsugi fans and listeners, our Peloton members, if you will, in the U.S. And also a happy belated Canada Day to all of our friends up in Canada. It's been one heck of a 2020, at least the first half. It's been bananas. It's been crazy. It's been all that and more. So I wasn't surprised when I recently saw a poll, and I know polls can be polls, but just surveys, snapshot in time, that 74% of Americans believe we're headed down the wrong track. That is a no bueno stat, no matter how you slice it. But this is a podcast about humans being better humans. It's also about leadership and resilience and all that jazz. It's not about politics. So I'm going to leave the political commentary off to the side. That said, that data point clearly suggests that we have some doubt here in the U.S. about our future, which way we're headed, how we're heading, whatever which way we're going. And it's not the first time we've had doubt in our country. We're a young country compared to most nations in the world. So you're going to have some moments where you're going to have doubt. Will this thing as designed play out? And along the way, We've built something, we've broken it down, we've built something better, we've broken it down, we've built something better. Much like Kintsugi art, you have something that you think looks great, you break it and you put it back together in that Kintsugi spirit and you make it more beautiful. And we've done that in this country. We've created a more beautiful tomorrow, even though things may not be perfect today, even if we have some doubt today. We find a way to make it a little bit better tomorrow. There's an old saying about doubt that I just love. If we can love old sayings about doubt, it goes like this. Doubt has killed more dreams than failure ever will. So today, on this weekend of celebrating our birthday as a country, I have more faith than doubt that we can create a more perfect union, even though everyone in this nation, really everyone in the world, It's the spirit of the Kintsugi podcast. We're all perfectly imperfect. I love our imperfections. I think our imperfections make us beautiful. The scars, the blemishes, the wrinkles, the gray hairs, all that. We are perfectly imperfect. But we can still, together, build something that's just a little bit more perfect tomorrow. And each day, day in and day out, pedal stroke by pedal stroke, as I would like to say, we can build something that's a little bit more attractive for all of us. Now, speaking of doubt, about four weeks ago, I came up with this grand plan. It's a little bananas. It's crazy. That I was going to ride my bike, or I am going to ride my bike, on the 11th of July, 19 hours inside. And you might be asking yourself, why would you do that? that? That is crazy. That is bananas, Michael. Well, I'm doing it to raise money for 19 charities. It's a celebration of my 19th anniversary since my last bad day. I consider it a second birthday. It's also to to throw out this one massive big gratitude ripple toward all those who are helping to support others in this moment in time during all of our crises. Because I know this, I'm only here today because so many people came to my aid that supported me on July 11th, 2001, which is 7-Eleven here in the States. So if you'd like to get your Slurpee on, you can go to the 7-Eleven convenience store and get a free one. I will not be doing that. Instead, I'll be riding my bike and recognizing everyone who's helped me along the way. I am who I am today because so many people, friends, family, colleagues, strangers have come and helped shape me in the way I am today. It's really remarkable. But when you throw out a big goal like that, 19 hours, 19 charities, and oh, by the way, 
I put out there I was going to raise $1.9 million. Now, I have never even attempted to raise that much money in my life. I haven't ridden my bike 19 hours either. I've done a lot of 12-hour rides. I've done some 24-hour relay rides, but it's not 19 hours straight. So when you throw a goal out there that's really big, but meaningful, you're going to get some doubters. Some would say, yeah, you're going to get some haters. That's what happens when you put out a goal that's on the edge of bananas, on the edge of crazy. Well, one of those doubters happens to be me. Yep. I have doubt from time to time. Even though I talk about resilience, I still have my doubt. I think we all do. And my doubt has sounded the same way since I was younger. We'll pin it on seventh grade because seventh grade was a hellacious year for most of us growing up. It always sounded the same since seventh grade. It goes like this. Michael, who do you think you are? You're not fill in the blank enough to pull this off. Listen to me, your ego. Save yourself some time, energy, and a whole bunch of embarrassment. It's my ego's way of putting up the resistance to hold me back to leave me stuck, or to play small. And that voice has popped into my head from time to time of late, like, who am I to raise this much money? I don't have a blue check mark by my name. Who are you to ride 19 hours? You're not a ultra endurance cyclist. You're not a pro. And you're also getting up there, O'Brien. You're not a young whippersnapper anymore. So all that stuff has played in my head. And I know you've probably had your moments of doubt. Now, our situations may be different. You may not be thinking about riding your bike 19 hours inside. It could have been when you got a promotion and a little imposter syndrome, which is a form of doubt, pops up. Or maybe you want to start a new business, but you feel stuck. Perhaps it's just becoming a parent for the first time. You have some doubt. Is this the right time to do it? Well, there's never really a good time to do that as a parent of two amazing daughters who are 19 and 22 right now. Or maybe you have some doubt as you're trying to create a new country or fighting for equality today. Like our situations, our narratives about our doubt will also differ. But they all tie back to four O's, as I like to say. For O'Brien, of course. One is, a lot of times we overthink things when we have doubt. It leaves us stuck. It doesn't propel us into action. Sometimes we get overly critical, self critical, when we get doubt on board. Other times we just want to get out of sight. We like to hide. And the fourth one is we feel optionless. And all of these, all these four O's, all leave us in the same position. We're not pedaling forward, we're stuck. We play it small. We never do the thing that we really want to do. That big goal, that big, hairy, audacious goal that we have in front of us, we never accomplish it because one of the four O's or maybe multitude of the O's come come to pay us a visit. It's that dance with doubt that we have to face. And for most people, we let those O's, the self-doubt, win. And when we do, it's almost impossible to create a better tomorrow. It's almost impossible to create our Kintsugi art, to break it down and build it back up in a more beautiful state. And I've had my moments of doubt during my career and through my recovery. And again, as I mentioned, the last four weeks. And what I've developed over time is a very quick process I want to share with you today in this conversation about resilience that helps me reduce the half-life of my doubt. And I think it can help you. It makes the doubt less intense. It doesn't stay as long. And therefore, I can dance with it differently than I did, say, back in seventh grade. And it starts with this, grabbing a PBR, our type here on the Kintsugi podcast, the pause, breathe, and reflect kind. Then I ask myself this question, Michael, how true is your doubt? How true is, hey, Michael, you are fill in the blank, not enough. I want to ask myself that question and ponder that. And the answer to that question is always the same. It's never true. I am enough, as you are enough. We all, as perfectly imperfect human beings, we are enough. That's what makes us beautiful. So then after I get done with that, 
that question and answer time. Next thing I do is I select one option, one action. It could be the smallest pedal stroke out there, but something, one thing I can do to get me going again. Because when we have doubt on board that's paralyzing, we are stuck. We're not moving. So I take one action to get back on the bike and start to pedal again. And that gets me going. And when I get going, then I can ask myself, okay, what's next? What's the next small thing I can do? And I know this coming through my recovery. My recovery was fueled by one small pedal stroke at a time, strung together over a number of days, over a number of months and years. That's how I am the person I am today. That's how I'm actually able to ride 19 hours on July 11th. So as I mentioned up front, we have now reached the halfway point in 2020. And it's been a rough start for us here in the States and in other places across our lovely planet. And it's easy to feel doubtful. It's easy to wonder, are we going to finish the year off strongly or are we going to have more of the same? And it's clear that we have a long to-do list. In the States, we have one major to-do list that we probably won't be able to cross off in one day or one weekend. But we also have a lot to be grateful for. There are building blocks. There is hope out there. There is faith. And I have no doubt that this moment, as I mentioned in previous Kintsugi podcasts, that this moment is happening for us so we can break down the old systems. And like Kintsugi pottery, create something more beautiful as we go forward. So yes, do we have some doubt? Yes, we do. It's perfectly natural. It's important now to ask ourselves, how true is it? Whatever narrative that we have, and what's one small thing we can do as we go forward? So as you go forward, and this is great, great work you could do on any holiday weekend. And I know you're listening to this one after the holiday weekend is over, but you could do it this coming weekend. To ask yourself these four questions, grab a different type of PBR, the, the, the one that we like, the pause, breathe, and reflect moment. Have a few moments of this. And just take stock, since we're halfway through 2020, on these four questions. What's working currently for you? What are you so lucky to have? A moment of gratitude, if you will. What could be working better? An eye towards opportunity and possibility in this moment. And what's the one thing you can do about it? As small as it may be. And that's how we start to dance with doubt a little bit differently. So thank you, as always, for listening to the Kintsugi Podcast Conversations About Resilience. As you know, this started out as a small project. I had some doubt when we started. Would anyone listen? Would anyone tune in and subscribe? when this all began, when COVID hit the States. But based on your feedback, I'm glad I did. It helps me continue to take small movements as we go forward. You listening is a big validation that the message of the Kintsugi Podcast is worth listening to. And as you subscribe and as you share, hopefully we can have more people, not only here in the States, but across the world, understand what it means to have a Kintsugi spirit, to have a spirit of resilience, because that's going to allow us to build a better tomorrow, a more beautiful world together and dance with our doubt differently. So I hope you'll continue to listen. I hope you'll subscribe and share with a member of your Peloton to spread the good word. Now, if you have a question for me, the best place to go is the KintsugiPodcast.com. Leave your question there and I'll do my best to answer it as quickly as possible. While you're there, you can check out my Leadership Academy, which will help you create the life and career you truly desire. It will help you become wealthy starting from the inside out. The world's getting more and more complex, and it's good to have someone in your corner, in your camp, in the trenches, if you will, that can help you navigate this crazy, precious world that we all live in. Someone who's confidential, objective, and judgment-free to be there by your side to help you make the impact you want to make. So again, the KintsugiPodcast.com, if you have a question or if you wish to check out the Paceline Leadership Academy. And until next week in our next conversation about resilience, I hope you stay healthy. And of course, I hope you have fun storming the castle. <laughs>